Welcome to another official Hyperspin tutorial with the AV Archivist. In the last episode, we explained how to properly install Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher. Today we'll be discussing how we decide upon which emulators we should use, and how to incorporate them into our setup. With so many different emulators to choose from, things can get very confusing very quickly when you're new to this hobby. If you're just starting out, you might find that the MAME and RetroArch multi-system emulators will fulfill most of your needs, but I still want to show you the tools that will help you make informed decisions. The first place you can look is in Rocket Launcher UI itself. If you followed along with our installation tutorial, the global emulators list will already be populated with 160 different emulators. If you click on the system in which you're interested in the left pane, you can then click the magnifying lens to the right of the default emulator parameter to bring up a list of officially supported emulators that can run that system's games. For some systems, such as Daphne, it narrows the options down pretty much completely. For other systems with more options, it gives us a solid reference to help with our research. The next place we'll look is a project called Non-MAME, the link to which I've provided in the description. As mentioned, MAME and RetroArch are two very capable multi-system emulators, and their ultimate goal is to, eventually, perfectly emulate every system in existence. The goal of the Non-MAME project is to review each and every emulator to determine which is the best for any given system right now. I encourage you to take a moment to review the Welcome to Non-MAME and Site Information sections of the website in order to learn about the project and its objective evaluation criteria. The final tool at our disposal is, of course, Google, combined with the experience you'll gain in time. This is important because Non-MAME takes time to update, and different emulators have certain quirks that you'll benefit from knowing about. Additionally, you can try searching the Hyperspin or Rocket Launcher forums. If you're really stumped or confused, you can always ask other members for help. In a few videos down the line, we'll be explaining how to set up a variety of different system types, one of which will be ROM-based console. For that, we'll be using the Nintendo Entertainment System as the example, so let's now use Non-MAME to determine which emulator is best for it. Here you can see, based on Non-MAME's criteria, the best emulator is RetroArch with an Estopia Core. You're also provided with a detailed summary of the current state of NES emulation in case you'd like to enhance your knowledge and understanding of the subject. RetroArch's cores are based on a variety of different open-sourced emulators. This gives RetroArch the advantage of having comparable accuracy and performance without the added hassle of having to set up each of those emulators individually. That being said, the latest version of the core's associated standalone emulator is always an option. To illustrate that point, I'll be using the latest release of Nestopia Undead Edition. For those interested, I've included links to both that and to RetroArch. The aspects of setup dealing with Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher will be virtually identical, regardless of which you choose. Now that we've chosen the emulator, we'll discuss how to add it to Rocket Launcher, a necessary step for running games through Hyperspin. First, we need to download our emulator of choice and place it in a designated emulators folder, like the one prepared for us in our Hyperspin directory. Some people prefer to keep their emulators folder separate from Hyperspin, and that's fine. You can ultimately place them wherever you'd like, but I do encourage you to keep them all in one location for organization's sake. Extract or install the emulator to its own folder, and be sure to give it a name that's descriptive of the specific version. Once this is done, you can delete the package it came in. This is a good time to run the emulator and make sure it starts and exits cleanly. If you're unfamiliar with it, you'll want to take the time to explore the different menus, get a feel for the environment, and customize it to your personal taste. We'll delve deeper into this side of things in subsequent videos. If you run into any problems starting or exiting the emulator, the first thing you're going to want to try is to right-click the emulator's executable and experiment with the compatibility options. Setting the privilege level to run this program as administrator is often an easy fix for a lot of problems. Next, we need to go into Rocket Launcher UI and once again proceed to the Global Emulators tab. Once there, locate the emulator you're setting up in the scrollable emulators list. The red exclamation point to the left of it indicates that Rocket Launcher doesn't currently see the emulator, so let's fix that now. Double-click the emulator in the list, or click on the Edit Selected Emulator button above the pane. This brings up a window where we can configure the emulator's path, the type of ROMs we'd like Rocket Launcher to try opening with it, the module Rocket Launcher will use when interacting with the emulator, as well as other parameters. Generally speaking, all we need to change here is the path. Click the path magnifying lens and browse to the executable file for the emulator we just installed. Close the edit window when you're finished, and the red exclamation mark should go away. From here we proceed to the Nintendo Entertainment System in the System pane, where we should still be in the Emulators tab. Click the magnifying lens beside Default Emulator, then find your emulator in the list, and double-click to set it as the primary emulator for this system. 
The last topic we'll cover today is the Modules tab, which lets us view and interact with the programming for the system's currently supported emulators. Select the module corresponding to the emulator you're using, and then choose the View Module Information icon to see additional details, such as when the module was last modified. As you can see, this module was written for an earlier Nystopia version. In most cases, modules will work fine with newer versions as well. The Rocket Launcher team does a great job of keeping things up to date and functional. If you ever have a module support issue, you can raise the subject on the Rocket Launcher forums. Next, click on the View Module Notes icon. This is a very important step, as the module notes might contain important instructions regarding the proper setup of this emulator, so always check and follow them. This is the first place to look if you run into trouble running your emulator through Rocket Launcher. The next icon, once you've configured an editor program, gives you the option of altering the selected module. We'll be setting up our text editor as part of the next video, but please keep in mind that you really want to have a good idea of what you're doing before modifying these modules. If you do, it's best to make a backup first. The icon after that takes you directly to the module's location, where there are sometimes templates for more advanced configurations in which you might be interested down the road, as your comfort level increases. We also have the option of changing certain emulator settings and parameters directly through Rocket Launcher UI. Unless the module notes indicated otherwise, these settings typically work fine with the defaults. You may, however, want to adjust them to suit your personal preferences or as your own system requires in order to achieve proper functionality. Lastly, we're also able to verify our settings file and launch the emulator directly through this menu if we so desire. That covers all the basics we need to understand when it comes to choosing an emulator and adding it to Rocket Launcher. These skills can be applied when setting up virtually any system in which we're interested. In the next video, I'll be introducing you to Hyperspin game databases and how to update them. I hope you found this to be helpful and informative. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and game on!